It's time for the absolutely... I'm on my way! Completely! I'm almost there! Random! Why are there so many stairs? Podcast! Oh, jeez! With Andrew Rhodes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the absolutely completely random podcast for Saturday, September 10th, 2022. I'm your host, Andrew Rhodes, as always here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. And I'd like to start off this opening by giving my condolences to any of my fans over in the UK on the loss of Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away Thursday at the age of 96. So I just wanted to, I, I wanted to mention that in the opening. I'll probably mention it uh, later on too, but I just wanted to mention that you have my condolences. Believe me, uh, she was loved far Far beyond just the shores of the UK, uh, there are people over here in the States that adored her as well. So, believe me, it is, this is a heavy loss for the entire world, not just England. This is a heavy loss for the world. Anyway, what am I talking about this week? Dr. Stone Consultants have gotten a book, they've gotten some of their books pulled from Amazon. And th this is actually kind of interesting. Nintendo has suffered a colossal game leak. Another colossal game leak. Not good, folks. You know VTubers, the uh, virtual YouTubers? Well, apparently they can get in trouble. They can get into a whole bunch of other shit. And a lot of places are just going to say, well, let's just make believe and pretend. Well, one Japanese court decided to side with the VTubers in a defamation case. And this is kind of interesting. And Twitch. Dear old Twitch, you jackasses, they are removing host mode and everyone's upset. I have not, honestly, I do not do Twitch, but I kind of have seen what host mode does for some of the people that do use it because uh, I was watching, I, I actually did watch a Twitch stream a couple times, so I kind of feel bad for them. I really do. But all of this and more this week on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. But, you know, going into this, you know, song and dance by now, I'm sure. A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. A wide variety of stuff for sale. One person's trash is always another person's treasure. On the worldwide flea market, that is eBay. Because where else could you possibly find a Kleenex that was used by Dr. Dre or some of Shatner's old goddamn toupees? Where on earth could you find half the computer crap that you never knew you wanted? Old school video games, consoles, even those discounted cheap as shit stuff that you might not have ever wanted to have, but you still want to have it anyway. If you think it, it might exist, and I'm pretty sure it's on eBay. Somewhere, somehow. You want a rubber ducky MP3 player? I got one. I bought one on eBay years ago. Just, I was never planning to use it as an MP3 player. I just wanted the little ducky as a desk ornament. It's just a little tiny ducky paperweight. I thought it was so cute. And it doubles as an MP3 player, though the battery is questionable because I don't trust internal batteries. And I'm like, oh, let it die. Let the battery die. I just wanted the little ducky as a paperweight. It only cost me a buck. Literally, it was only like a buck at the time, so I was like, yeah, what the hell? But yes, go check it out. And while you're over on eBay, come check me out. It's A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. And I'm also over on Etsy as well with my Etsy shop, Simple Design by Andrew, because, you know, the world is complex, and we need some simplicity to it, right? So I create simple designs for the complex world, from wedding invitations to party invitations, I have a coloring book, both for holiday and, and Christmas season, as well, well, holiday, Christmas, and winter, as well as just one in general for everybody to enjoy. I mean, come on, it's a great place. Hey, I even have some stationery now, and I'm working on adding some new stuff, so come on, check out my Etsy shop, Simple Design by Andrew. We also have a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash webdesigner18, as well as a Kofi page. I know I don't really update either of those. I am working on it. Believe me, I'm I'm working on it. You can also follow me over on Twitter, out of Take Your Roads. And don't forget to like the official Facebook page for Webdesigner18. And 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Because, hey, where else are you going to possibly find out about the cool stuff that happens here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel? All right, so, Andrew, how'd your week go? Um, I actually want to say this. It's a slight improvement over last week. Not by much. Not by much at all. But it is a slight improvement over last week. So, uh, for those of you that missed last week's episode of How Fucked Am I, <laughs> I think that's I think that's what I was I think that's what I want to call this for a while. This little segment is How Fucked Am I? <laughs> for those of you that missed last week's episode, um, we were dealing with the possibility of having to be homeless. Um, didn't know what was going to happen. Uncle's in the hospital. He is dying. We know this. Um, so Tuesday, like Monday night, we get a phone call. And we're like, oh, God, here it is. And I didn't know about it till Tuesday morning when I got home. And I'm like, okay, what the hell? Well, here, um, no, he just called to say, hey, if you guys want to come in and see me while my eyes are still open, uh, hurry it the hell up. So we're like, okay. So we went in then on Wednesday, but my mom was like, well, let me give, let me give your aunt a call. And give her the heads up just in case. Because we didn't know anything. Okay? We, we did not know anything uh, prior to this. So, like, Sunday. So, basically, Saturday uh, was the last time we talked with my aunt. Uh, Sunday was basically no communications whatsoever. Monday, no communications whatsoever. We talked to her Tuesday. So, my one aunt is now in charge of what my uncle was doing. So my mom and I, as of right now, don't have the fear of uh, losing the roof over our heads for the time being. It's not a permanent solution, not by a long shot. We still have to take care of everything and finalize everything. And there's probably going to be some back and forth. And they're going to, she's probably going to want money, but it's not worth, it's not worth anything. It's really not. It's more valuable to us as it is than it is monetarily. So that's going to be an interesting little uh, climax. But for the time being, for the time being, we're we're safe. For the time being. Apparently she did this on Sunday. She went over and had all the stuff signed and everything else. She's like, okay. And the whole time she was telling my mom this. And my mom's like returning the, you know, letting me know then afterwards. I'm like, she couldn't have picked up a phone and called us at any point yesterday any point Sunday? No. We're sitting here for a whole two days uh, dreading the freaking worst case scenario and she couldn't have bothered to pick up a phone. Yeah, so, I, so I, you never get in bed with family, boys and girls. <laughs> you never get in bed with family. So hopefully we can get all this squared away, um, God willing, because I, I would really just like to have the roof over my damn head. I know... Because this is the aunt that's going to be a little uppity because I don't have a job. I know that. But there's a story. There is a story behind that. Now, granted, and I never sugarcoated this. I, was I happy with my job? Not entirely. Things were starting to get better. We were we were reaching the apex of okay. And everything was it's like, look, I wasn't completely happy with it. But at the same time, at that point, I wasn't entirely miserable about it. We had found it, between my supervisor and I, we found a nice common ground that I was comfortable with, she was comfortable with, and everything was working. It was the one above her, or, yeah, no, it would have been the one above her slightly. Or not even, well, yeah, not even slightly. It would have just been, like, the one that had, like, the same level that she did that wasn't too uh, keen with the idea and kept wanting to screw with my schedule. That kept annoying me, and it was just a buildup of stuff over time that just was starting to reach its apex, but there, there's an entire story behind why I left my job for the other job that ended up letting me go after three weeks. There, there is a story behind it. It was... The apex of the story was what created the turning point and why I basically jumped at the opportunity. So, yeah. Like I said, I, I said this last week, if this is something... If there's something that I want people to know, I will tell you. I will not sugarcoat it. I will be transparent. If there's something that I don't want you to know, or I don't believe you should know, or I don't want to air this yet publicly, I will hold it until I believe the time is right. I'm you know, I, I'm not the type of person. You want to know something about me, just ask. 
Come right out and ask. If it's something that I will answer, I'll answer it. If it's something that I kind of feel like, no, I don't want this to be out in dirty laundry, I'll go, eh, I don't really feel like answering that. You know, it, it's not that I don't want to air it yet. Eventually, everybody's dirty laundry gets aired. That, that's the thing. Everybody has dirty laundry, and eventually it's going to get aired. Because your washing machine is going to break at some point. You're going to have to hang it outside the dry. So it's, it's, at some point, <laughs> you're trying all yeah. Well, at some point, you're going to have to air it. So when that time comes, I will let everybody know. Believe me, you will know. But for the time being, no. And I will tell my aunt, I will tell my aunt exactly this if she asks... Because it is it is exactly what transpired to create the situation that I'm currently in now. So there is that. But um, yeah, so that was part of the week. Uh, so that would have been Tuesday. Wednesday we went over to see my uncle. And once again, I was thinking Afro Man. Because <laughs> um, they got my uncle on the good pain meds. Because <laughs> my mom and I had to stop. Because we had to change the locks uh, at the house. And we had to change... Um, well, I, we had to pick up a toilet seat. Now, this, this is a fun story. Our toilet seat for, I want to say, the last couple... I would say almost a year. I think I think it was almost a year. Our toilet seat has been broken. At first, it cracked in half, and I put some duct tape on it. Literal duct tape that I got at the Dollar Tree. It was like a bluish-purple color, and I put that on over the spot. I'm like, look, it's, it's convenient. It holds. It's not going to create any bacteria, and it's fine. There was a quick fix because our plan was, well, I'll stop and I'll look into getting one on my way home one day. And I just kept forgetting and kept forgetting and kept forgetting and kept forgetting and kept forgetting. Then the back of the toilet seat broke. Like the part that you put your back on, that broke. And I'm like... <sighs> now, to be fair, that one was already breaking. That was going when my grandfather was still alive. I'm like, just take it off. We'll be, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, we'll, we'll fix it at some point, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Since we had to change the locks, I'm like, you know what, fuck it, we're gonna get a new toilet seat too while we're at it. Kill two birds, one fuck, one goddamn fucking stone. We're just gonna take care of this in one fell swoop here. Two birds, one stone. So, I uh, picked that up, changed out the lock, which was the first time I have ever had to do this. And this is, and I, I swear to God on this, it will be the last. Because next time I'll get the fucking locksmith. <laughs> I'll just I'll just pay somebody else to fucking do it. Um, I mean, unless it's just gonna be a simple, I'm getting the exact same one again, and then I'll be fine. But oh my god, this is a pain in the ass to change out a lock. Um, the hole that it went in was a little too small, so I had to take a file, and this is a wooden door, mind you. So I had to file it around to widen the hole a bit so I could get the piece in. I got the piece in. I'm like, oh, thank God. It's in. I hook everything up. It's And the thing is, you can tell it's a me job. It's not perfect because on the outer part, it's not completely flush. The little gear mechanism isn't completely flush. But it still locks and everything else. And I could probably undo it. I, I literally could probably just unscrew the damn thing again and uh, readjust it, put it shit back in, and it'll probably be fixed and... I'm liable to do that because it does kind of bother me a bit, but it's functioning, it's working, and I don't want to rock the boat on this. So that was one nightmare. Uh, this lock came with a door handle, which we don't need for the one door because it already has a handle on it. That's perfectly fine. So I'm like, okay. So, well, okay, the, the one part of it is perfectly fine, but it's we, we fixed the other part. But um, I'm like, I got to replace this other one. So I'm trying to get this other one off. And it's not coming off, it's not coming off, it's not coming off, it's not coming off. I can't figure out how to, because I'm like, it should just pull right off, it should just pull right apart, and it's not pulling apart. Eventually, I just got so pissed off at this thing, I went, grabbed a hammer, and I just started, I just started wailing on this thing. And I mean, I'm like, damaging it, I'm denting it, I, I just fucking destroyed it. Didn't damage the hole or anything that it goes into, popped it right off. Other end, I just took the hammer... One, two taps, boom, right out. I'm like, good, problem solved. Now we're done. Went and grabbed everything, and I'm starting to put it together. I'm like, okay, this should be this, this should be good. Get the whole thing together. I'm so happy, and I realize that I put the stupid piece in backwards. This was Thursday, mind you. Okay, this this would have been Thursday. No, no, yeah, no, no, yes, yes, this would have been Thursday. I realized I put the piece in backwards. 
And I'm like, son of a bitch. I put the piece in back, and I'm pissed. I'm kicking myself and everything else. I'm like, son of a bitch. I put the piece in backwards. So I go, take the whole thing apart again. <laughs> Just to turn this stupid piece, put the whole thing back together again. Pull the door closed, and I'm like, I swear to God, if you don't fucking lock. Because I went to check it on the outside. I'm like, okay, it locks on the outside. Okay, it's closed on the outside. Good. Perfect. I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm happy with this. I go, close the door, and I'm like, I close it, I lock it, and I'm like, ah, oh, good. It works. Fine. Doesn't, it's not fucked up. It's not broken. Perfect. Just what I wanted to see. <laughs> that, was, that was most of my week was just... Uh, leveling up, doing... Here, here's a new experience point for you, Andrew. Yay! A new experience point! Because I I was not expecting um, to have that much trouble with a freaking... I'm not even joking. With a freaking door handle. I was not expecting to have that much trouble. Uh, but that was Thursday, and then uh, we found out that the Queen passed away then. I was I got on Twitter, and I'm like, okay, they're calling everybody because she's on medical supervision. I'm like, okay, well, this isn't good. But now, she had had some health scares before, and I was like, okay, well, maybe she's just, like, you know, not feeling too well or something. And because of her age and everything, I'm like, okay, so, like, you know, she's got, like, a fever. Or maybe she might have the flu, and it's automatic. Hey, you know, medical supervision, you know, red flag. Um... Then later on in the afternoon, I'm on Twitter again. It's like, all of a sudden it came up. And this is the thing. I did not see it trending on Twitter. It wasn't in that Explore thing. Because all of a sudden, that was that, that shut off. I saw it on a tweet from a Japanese magazine that showed up um, on Twitter for some reason. And that's how it came up. And then I'm double checking it and everything else. It's like, well, the BBC is saying it. And now I have learned this over the years. If you ever want to have something internationally confirmed, you check with the BBC. Because if the BBC has it, then there's a good chance that it's true. And the BBC had it up. And I'm checking Twitter again. And I'm checking a few other sources. Uh, New York Times pulled it up then, and I'm like, yep, she passed away. So, um, but yeah, it like I said, my condolences go out to uh, the United Kingdom. My condolences go out to the royal family. Uh, to be honest with you, and I will agree on this because uh, there's a lot of people that actually did say that. A lot of uh, and it would be my generation too. Uh, over in the UK, have never known another monarchy. They they have never known another monarch. Because she was around for seventy years, she had that she had that position for seventy years, and I'm not going to lie, uh, I honestly do not remember another one. Because when I was born, she was she was the queen, so there is that. But um, I'd like to give a moment of silence, if we may, um, for Her Majesty uh, Queen Elizabeth II, if we may, please. Farewell, Your Majesty. Alright, boys and girls. Let's talk science, pseudonyms, and books. So, first off, I love pseudonyms. Because if you ever want to create something, but you don't want your name out there, the best way to do it is to create a pseudonym. There are actors that do this. It's called stage names. Like, look at Austin St. John. That's not his actual name. That's his stage name. That's what he is known as when he applies for roles in shows, movies, and stuff like that. It's Austin St. John, but he actually has a real name in real life. Some actors don't do this, and as far as like creators, writers, authors, and stuff like that, pseudonyms are highly known. Like, you know, oh, hey, I don't want to be known as this particular, you know, person. Like, hey, I don't want my real name known, so I'm going to create a pseudonym. Because I don't want them, you know, mobbing me or something out in the open. Which a lot of art, there are authors that do it. There are artists that do it. There are YouTubers and online and online personalities that do it too. It's like, look, I have an actual name in real life, but this is what I'm known as online. So this is what you know me as, but you don't know what my real name is, so you don't actually know the real me. So there's a lot of people that do that. So. 
Uh, the pseudonym, though, for a uh, specific group of science writers uh, who have been consultants for the Dr. Stone manga since volume 10. Uh, it's called Yakuri Koshitsu. Um, they have a nonfiction series of their own. It's called The Impossible Sciences. That's what it's translated as, Impossible Science. However... For some reason, even though the title says Impossible Science, even though the title itself tells you that this is not possible, two of their books have been yanked down from Amazon Japan. And the reasoning behind this is still boggling to me. It, it, it really is. So, uh, the publisher, Sansai Books, uh, reached out to Amazon Japan, just basically like, hey, uh, what, 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 what gives? What, what, what the fuck? Um, is there a reason why you yanked down our stuff? Is there a reason why, you know, our books were yanked down? Are you telling us that they're not good enough for you? Or do we need more pictures? we got to dumb this down. Um, is it too, um, educational? Is it too, you know, non-fiction-y? Is it too, you know, stupid? Um, look, I mean, if you didn't understand it, that's not our problem. It may not be geared to you, but, you know, give us a heads up here. What's the deal here? What, what do we do to piss you off? And this is an interesting thing here. So apparently Amazon Japan uh, pointed to the Tatori Prefecture Law, uh, which states that science books were considered harmful to use by the standards of the Tatori Prefecture Law. So in other words, they yanked them down because a prefecture's law deems science books harmful to children. See, this is why, like I said, I don't talk about politics and religion on here, and if I do, it's sort of like the, I'm outside the box, you press right up against the box a bit, or I'm tiptoeing through the tulips on this, because, like, look, this is, and this I kind of find, um, Interesting for a majority of reasons, because now, first off, for Amazon to be yanking stuff down is nothing new. In any way, shape, or form, it's nothing new. Um, especially Amazon Japan. They ha they are notorious for yanking down uh, book titles, for yanking down um, DVDs, what have you. They are notorious for this. Um, they are, aside from, I think, a few... Um, I think like a few other places, they are notorious. And I mean like highly notorious for this because they just, for them, it's it has to meet their criteria. And if it doesn't meet their criteria, they disapprove of it tremendously. And that's one of the things that still bothers me yet. Because it almost seems like, no, we're not okay with you doing this, this, and this. It has to be this. So it's nothing new. But what is new is that when they're doing this to cover themselves, so... Now, this makes me wonder, does it matter? Or is it just them wanting to find a loophole to get rid of it because they don't like it or they don't understand it? That's that. That's my question now. So, uh, Sansai Books disagreed and asked that their book be put back on Amazon Japan. Amazon Japan said if this happens, the book would have to be labeled as 18 plus. Okay. So, in other words, they're claiming that because your books can be harmful to youth, we can't have it on here. But if you want it on here, it needs to be rated 18 plus. So basically, if you want it on here, we have to label it for adults only, which makes it porn. Because we're considering it science. And th this is sort of going on... Because I, I actually know. This is, a, this is a funny thing. I actually know because of where I grew up and the school district that I went to. I remember when I was in elementary school, there was an entire argument over this. Because it was the one reason why the one year in health class, we had to have permission slips signed out the ass. For everything. I think my mom will remember this. I know I know you're listening too, Mom. I know you're listening to this. You should remember this. You had. I, it's like every week I was bringing home a permission slip that you had to sign ad infinito every week to the point that I basically just handed it to you before we even left the damn parking lot because you picked me up in elementary school. 
before we even left the parking lot, um, I handed it to you and you had already signed it. Every freaking week. Because they don't want to teach certain things to children. And this was a this was a huge issue. I remember this in I remember this in elementary school. And now to be fair, and this shows you how old I am. When I was in elementary school, this would have been in the 90s. Okay? This would have been in the 90s. That should tell you something. But it's like we had science class and we had health class. And science class dealt with the earth dealt with plants, dealt with the universe, dealt with elements, that was it. Health class dealt with the human body, what you can and can't put into your body, drugs, etc. And we had to have permission. It was like every freaking week. I remember, I, I don't remember if it was fifth grade or sixth grade, but I just remember every freaking week Permission slip, permission slip, permission slip, permission slip, permission slip, permission slip. To the point that my mom was getting fed up with this. And I don't think she was the only one. I don't think she was the only parent. But I just remember, it's like, here, you need to sign this. What's this for? It's permission slip for the one class. I just signed this. I know they're having to sign it again. I, 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 I know you remember this. I know you remember this, mom. I know you remember this. Like, every freaking week. So, yeah. But I, I love this house. So Sansai Books disagrees with Amazon Japan. Which I, even I would disagree with them. Okay? If you want to consider it this way, they have manga that is rated for 16+. Plus. And there is more in that than I guarantee you in any science book. You have the entirety of Dr. Stone, which literally explains science. Excuse me for a moment, boys and girls, while I say this. You have Dr. Stone that literally is explaining science. What does that tell you? Thank you. I rest my case. But apparently, uh, like I said, Sunside Books disagreed and told them, hey, put our book back up on your site. This is BS. And Amazon Japan was like, no, well, we can, but you just got to be rated 18+. With the ball basically now back in Sansai's court, Sansai is like, what the fuck? There is nothing in the book to warrant an 18 plus rating. It's like, there's look, there, there's no tits hanging out. There's no uh, schlongs waving in the breeze. You're not seeing one naked body in this thing. We're not showing you any drugs, any chemicals. We're not showing you a crack addict on smack, smacking up cocaine and shooting it between his pee pee hole. We're not showing you nothing here. There is, there is, this is, there's nothing in this to warrant an 18 plus rating. Not a goddamn thing. However, Amazon Japan is sticking to this. It's like, nope. You want, you want this back up on our site, 18 plus. And it's back up on our site. Until then, it's off our site. You want to have this smut peddled on our site? You need to make it for adults only. It's, this smut is not allowed for anyone under the age of 18. So this didn't stop Sansai Books. They're like, you know what? Screw this. They went right to the source. They, they decided, you know what? We're just going to do an end run around you. And we're going to go talk to the horse's mouth itself. Why bother talking to the rear end of the horse? Let's talk to the horse's mouth. You know, Mr. Ed, he'll give you an answer faster than his ass will. So, <laughs> I love that. yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so they went to the source and they asked the Totori Prefectural Government, uh, what in the fuck's going on? And they responded by giving them a summary of Totori's Youth Healthy Development Ordinance, which didn't help anything. <laughs> and I really hate, like I said, I tiptoe through the tulips with politics stuff. I, I will not touch politics or religion on here, but this is something that I do kind of find interesting. That a book is being yanked down. I, in all honesty, I am honestly thinking that it was more Amazon Japan just didn't want the book on their site anymore. More so than uh, them hiding behind this. I, I think they're honestly, because if you've known Amazon Japan, if you've heard the horror stories, 
this seems like they just didn't want it on their site because they're considering it porn, they're considering it dangerous. But they didn't want it on their site. And it kind of feels, because they might have realized that, hey, these are the people that are, you know, connected with this anime that takes place in like a stone age where people are half naked. Oh, oh, wait a minute, that's pornography. Oh, we, we, we can't have that. We're Amazon Japan, we can't have that. No, 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 we, we have to be pure and wholesome. We, we got to yank this off our site. So, yeah. Kind of feel like that, all right? And they're using this as their scapegoat. But I love that, though, how... Well, here's our response. Here's our Youth Healthy Development Ordinance. So that's like um, going and asking a question about, hey, I, I can't find an answer. Hey, I, I need to know if my neighbor's, um, you know, new fence that they put up is encroaching on my property. Is there any way you could help me with that? Here's the history of your neighborhood. <laughs> it's like, it's not, it doesn't give you an answer. That's the answer that doesn't help anything, basically. Um, so yeah, that, that didn't help at all. Uh, so the professional government later said it was an overall it was the overall content of the book uh, that got them in trouble, but couldn't list any specifics. Like the information pushed is inaccurate. Or you know these you know what you're talking about here might be easily duplicated, you know ad infinito shit like that. They, they couldn't give an exact answer, which is a red flag, which kind of tells me that they don't even know what the hell's going on, and are probably like, why are they coming after us? I don't know. We don't have time for this. What, what the hell's Amazon Japan's problem? Just tell them to fucking publish it. Be done with it. The hell's going on here? Why are they coming? Why are they coming after us for? Oh, because Amazon Japan banned their book. Oh my god. So as of now, though, the book is still the books are still unavailable on Amazon Japan. Uh, Soundside Books is stuck just selling them on their own uh, online store. Though nine out of ten of their sales, though, came from Amazon, which is a huge chunk of their cheese, which is bad. Uh, Sensei Books has also made it clear it's not happy uh, with the prefectural government uh, basically not telling them why the book's being banned. Uh, it's bad news, according to them, for freedom of expression. But it, th So this is what I I'm getting from this. This, is what, this is, like I said, this is why I found this interesting. I kind of feel like this is a book that is tied directly to the anime. So either somebody from the prefecture didn't like the anime or Amazon Japan just wanted to do their standard this doesn't fit with our changing policy thing. And again, like I said, if you've ever seen the horror stories when it comes to Amazon Japan, there was an anime figurine um, that was put on Amazon Japan that was selling like crazy. And it got yanked off because they're like, "Oh my god, it, it's like a, it's a half naked, it's a half naked creature." They were claiming it was child pornography. It wasn't. They were claiming it was indecent. It was fully clothed. First off, it was fully clothed. It was a robot. It was, it was technically a female android. It was fully clothed. It was, so it wasn't even human. And they were citing pornography, they were citing this, that, and that, and they're like, this has to be, this, this is for adults only. It was literally a figurine about maybe three inches tall. And that was one of the stories that I remember reading online about this. And this is just, th this to me screams Amazon Japan just didn't want this thing on their site anymore. Either they don't like the publisher, they don't want the content on there, or they don't want anything that, quote, is within their, um, we don't tolerate this zone. The fact that they were willing to put it back up, but saying that, you know, it would have to have an 18 plus rating, means that we'll put it back up, but we're going to lump it with anything that we consider anime related and as far as they're concerned any and all anime is 18 plus and that's honest that is their thing because if you ever look at amazon japan 
a lot of the anime stuff is labeled 18 plus because they consider it either pornography or well not only most just consider it porn and I, I think part of that is interspecies reviewer uh, which did not help the matter at all but I found this interesting especially for the fact that they decided oh we're just gonna they just completely turned this it's like well this isn't us this is them they're not happy with it go complain to them I don't think it was them mostly I think it was um I, I honestly think it was more Amazon Japan. I really do. Because it's kind of funny how they can't even give an answer as to why. Uh, like, what's the specific on here? What's, you know, they're just saying it's the overall content. Okay, well, what exactly about the overall content? Um, is there something in here that you think, you know, we need to address? You know, give us a little bit of a headway here. What, you know, what pissed you off? But they couldn't give a specific, which kind of, to me, is a red flag of... We don't, it's just overall content. Just, we don't know what the hell's in this book. Why the hell should, why would we know what's in this book? We were just told it, it violated something from us. We don't know anything. So, I, I don't know. It's an interesting topic, though, to say the least. It also, it, it also completely, once again, shows why you should never buy from Amazon Japan. Never. Want to buy from Amazon? Go for it. As far as Amazon in Japan is concerned, I wouldn't touch it with a five and a half foot pole. And I mean that. I wouldn't touch them at all. But um, yeah, like I said, interesting topic. That's why I wanted to talk about it. It was a very interesting topic. All right, so Nintendo has just suffered another leak. It is a colossal game leak. This one just like spewing out water everywhere. Or in this case like ink yeah you'll get it but as appears to ever be the more frequent case nintendo suffered another one of its first party games leaking all over the internet weeks before its release or basically about a week before its release yep this time splatoon 3 the much hyped threequel of the company's pet project and it's already in some players hands ahead of its release that came out on the 9th ouch that's not good it's important to begin by saying exactly what is meant by leak in this case. Yeah. So most often, and certainly in so this, and certainly so in this case, it's not due to something so nefarious as like a group of nerds in the basement hacking Nintendo because they want to have the copy first, or a disgruntled employee. Oh, Nintendo screwed me to the wall. I'll show them. I'll show them all. I'll get this game out. I'll put it out on the internet. They'll all be screwed. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like that. It's, not, it's nothing as nefarious as that in this case. It's basically that the retail copies have gotten to the customers early. Thus, Splatoon 3 is having some footage spanned across Reddit, while cracked versions of the game are already being reported to have already appeared for the PC. Ouch, ouch, and double ouch. So, if you glance by Kotaku across some of the more obvious places, this show no signs of Splatoon 3 files being available anywhere. However, all manner of extraordinarily dodgy sites purport to offer copies, while most likely providing you with a free collection of malware or password lock builds with a key hidden behind all manners of costly bullshit, and it's best to be avoided. It's basically like a crappy game of Saw. There's one trillion dollars in this in this blood tube. You know, like what they put their blood in at hospitals and labs? There's one trillion dollars in that tube. You want that money? I know you want that money. This is what you gotta do to get that money. You see that toilet bowl over there? It's filled with hypodermic needles that have all sorts of diseases on it. On top of that, if you can get past those, there's some rabid beavers down there just waiting to bite and gnaw your hands. And if that isn't bad enough for you, just to rub salt in the wound, we got freaking weasels pissing on your arm as you're going down in there. So you gotta smell that shit as you're reaching down through the disease-ridden needles to the rabid beavers all for a chance for one trillion dollars. Are you game enough to try? No, I didn't fucking think so. Because nobody is stupid enough to do that. 
Like, she really wants the game. It's like, oh, look at that. Hey, what's, I can get it for free. And here's your collection of malware, password hacking. Things will now know what color underwear you're wearing today, which your mother's maiden name is. We'll be able to know if you managed to take a piss this morning. That's how much of your information we're going to have because we're a dodgy site that you clicked on to get this free copy of Splatoon 3. Yeah, it's BS. Uh, all of these, though, are interesting and certainly nuanced territory, though. Uh, the Splatoon subreddit has announced its intention to remove any posts that give away previously unrevealed elements of the game's story on the basis that they're considered spoilers. However, it's worth noting that this isn't a pure response to the game's leaking, but rather their standard approach to spoilers with even stricter story spoiling rules coming into effect once the game is officially released. Let me ask this question. Is there actually a story mode with Splatoon? I thought it was basically a you go around, shoot people with ink, and you try to clean it up. It's basically like you need to cover everything in your ink in order for the other ink to not take effect. That's what I thought this game was. There's a story behind this? Is there lore? <laughs> There's a story? Is there lore? I didn't know that. So this puts Nintendo in a spot, too, since potentially cracked PC versions aside... No one who has mistakenly received a retail copy is doing anything wrong. Let me say that again. No one who has mistakenly received a retail copy is doing anything wrong. While the press who have received early review copies, which does not include Kotaku. Oh, sorry. Which, yeah, which does not Wow, they didn't even get it. They didn't even get one? What the hell? Well, I guess you guys aren't good enough for this. Uh, will have likely signed an NDA, or a non-disclosure agreement, or at least have agreed to embargo restrictions. Basically, if you ever watch K-Wing's Let's Play, they said that they were allowed to play, it was Kingdom Hearts 3. They're like, we can play this game up to this point. We cannot go past this point until the game is officially released to the public. Until that point, this is all the further we can go. And they stress that. So that, that's an embargo restriction. So it's like, you cannot go any further than this. You can release the game. You can show footage of the game. You can do this. But you cannot go any further in the game than this point. Because that's probably all the further that the demo had. And it's like, you cannot go any further than that. That's it. So members of the public have done no such thing if their retailer has handed out or mailed a copy early. Then they're free to post footage, write about the story, do whatever they like. Nintendo can try to chase after them all with their magic lawyers, like the freaking flying monkeys in The Wizard of Oz. You can send out the lawyers, you can send out the dogs, you can send them all, but we have done nothing wrong! We are victorious! Wait a minute, this isn't Braveheart, this is fucking Nintendo coming after, wanting to come after us, and we didn't do shit! <laughs> That's the truth here. Uh, but yeah, so Nintendo, you can chase after it all you want, uh, but you'd question whether they really should be allowed to. On the other hand, though, the vast majority of people who are waiting for their copy this Friday, which is what it came out already, don't want their experience spoiled by the very few who accidentally landed it early. Hey, look, it's not my fault that they screwed up and I got my copy early. I want to enjoy it. I want to share what happens. You could take it as maybe this is a ROM hack, maybe this is a fan-made game, maybe something strange is going on here. I don't know. I could be rickrolling all of your asses. You don't know. But yeah, for them though, having to spend the week trying to dodge spoilerific videos and posts while engaging in enjoyable pre-release hype can be a real gall ache. Basically, figure it this way, it's a swift kick to the gonads. And then you're on the ground begging and pleading to be put out of your misery. Yeah. So they might as well uh, appreciate Nintendo's Grey Army having such content deleted. Yeah. You might argue, though, who's really playing Splatoon 3 for the story? Again, there's a story to this? There's a story to this? No, no, I, I, I want to talk about this. There's a story to this? There is a story. There's a story to that. There is a story. How is there a story? 
How's there a story? There's a story to this game? Really? I mean, that's almost like... That is literally the argument that you could make for, like, back in the 90s and the early 2000s and the 80s when you had people that were reading Playboys. Like, well, I'm reading it for the articles. There are articles? <laughs> there are articles? It's like, there's a story with this game? Loads of people, though. Yeah, but aside from the answer being loads of people, seriously, there's a story to this? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just amazed by that. Of course, that's all there is to spoil, given the multiplayer modes were previously revealed and the server to play it on aren't even online until the game gets launched. So what exactly are you spoiling? A story? That, really, there's a story to this? So this is now pretty much um, the rigor for Nintendo's first party releases. The same having happened in the past year for Metroid Dread, uh, the summer's Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl release, and July's Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And heck, it's been a pattern for a few years now. Nintendo just can't get their shit together. That's sad, sad, and horrifying. So if you're hoping to approach Splatoon 3 completely fresh this Friday, be extra vigilant for what you want to for what you watch and read the next few days. Well, all right, by this time it's already out, but still, I mean, Jesus Christ. There's a story to this game? There's a story, I'm sorry, there's a story to this? I don't ever remember hearing about a story for Splatoon. It's a game, to me, I was always imagining, okay, it's, it's a game where you have ink and you're shooting this ink and the ink has to cover up the other ink and if the other ink overpowers your ink, then you lose. That's how I've always envisioned this. There's a story to this? How is there a story to this? There's a story to this? How? How is there a story? I never knew there... How is there a story to this? That's weird to me. How is there a story? Oh, well, there's a story. Okay. There's a story to this. I... There's a story. All right. There's a story. Hmm. All right. First off, I love it when online personalities see justice. I love it when it's either for them or against them. I just, it, it just fills me with some wonderful, wonderful feelings inside. Like they know beyond a doubt, they have no chance in hell whatsoever of ever losing again, or they have no chance in hell of ever winning. I love that. It, it's like an evening out of the playing field where you know, you're not above the law. This, though, is just interesting in general. So virtual YouTubers or VTubers are treated like they're real people. You know, they have thoughts, they have feelings, they have their own names, biographies. They can even get in trouble. However, because all this happens in the world of make-believe, you know, with, you know, I can be a knight fighting the dragon, or I can, you know... Be this super powerful deity that doesn't do anything and just sits on my ass all day. It's the wonderful world of make-believe. Yeah. A court in Japan just sided with a VTuber in a lawsuit. And this is actually an interesting one that I think would have ramifications down the road for actual, actually good ramifications, not bad ones. So... The VTuber in question is not named, for obvious reasons, uh, but she said, but she's successfully, uh, successful enough that she has more than a million followers. Last year, a person posted anonymous and derogatory messages about the VTuber on an internet forum dedicated to her. Two of those messages were, she is mentally immature because she doesn't have a ma because she doesn't have a mother, and she can't be helped because she's an idiot. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jackass of the Century. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So, uh, the woman behind the VTuber filed a lawsuit to find out who said these things, alleging that the comments hurt her reputation. Her internet provider, though, responded that the pejorative comments may be aimed at an avatar, but not at the woman. And therefore, they wouldn't share who the anonymous person was. Now, for those of you out there at home paying attention, this is what we call a red flag. A bright, bright, bright red flag. 
Like, you can see this thing for six miles, red flag. Not good, either. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The woman behind the VTuber then took this to court. See, and the Osaka District Court sided with her. The presiding judge, um, I'm going to probably butcher this. Ma Satsoshi. Yeah, Masa to Masatoshi uh, Ishimaru. I do apologize if I mispronounce that. Uh, declared that the woman acts wearing an image of an avatar as if it is a costume. And if I know anything about well, the stories that I've seen online about the uh, people kicking the crotch of those Mickey Mouse wearing costumes and shouting uh, comments at the ones wearing costumes of like Disney princesses or uh, fantasy creatures stuff like that they have rights too damn it yeah because of this the judge thinks that any libious or libious uh, or anything libel that yeah libelous against the character is also libelous against the woman who created her the court declared even if the lawsuit was directed, or even if the insult, sorry, was directed at an avatar on the surface, it can be recognized that it was directed at a person who works as an avatar. So in other words, because it's an avatar that this person controls, it could be directed to her. Not a good thing. Yes. So, uh, 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 that's bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically. Uh, all right, so you know, it was the woman who was defamed. Then, as a result, the court has ordered the internet company to tell the woman who wrote these comments. This isn't the first time though something like this has happened. A few months ago, a court in Tokyo sided with another VTuber in a defamation case. So, in their own way, VTubers are real after all. Well, yeah, they're not exactly fake. They're they are real. See, this is the thing. It's, and I was thinking about this this morning. Imagine, if you would, let's say I created a kid's show. And as the star of this kid's show, I have created this rainbow-colored iguana. And this rainbow-colored iguana is basically a foam costume with an actual person inside. And that foam-colored iguana is basically the one teaching children about the world. Hey, you know, everything in the world is its own special thing. It's a rainbow colored iguana. I don't know what the hell to call this show, but we'll just call it rain we'll just call it Iguana's Rainbow or something. I don't know. But let's say that all of a sudden people start making derogatory comments towards our rainbow colored iguana here. And now the iguana's not happy. Okay, now the iguana's a sad panda. This could basically be then said that, hey, because of this, they have defamed the person inside the suit, who is the one that provides, let's say, the voice, the movements, it's tailor-made to them. So, that, to me, would be defamation to the actual person, as it's a costume. Yeah. Add infinito with other things, like you have... Even this is even doesn't even have to uh, mostly apply to VTubers. This would go for like any YouTube personality. Like let's say, hey, you know, this is a derogatory comment towards. Let's say you had a person that used a. I'm gonna say it this way. Let's say you had like a hand drawn avatar, sort of like the 2D animations, like Saber Sparks and some of the other ones have. But let's say that it's you know, like doesn't look like you. It's just a costume then. And they start shooting derogatory comments to you. Hey, guess what? That's defamation as far as this is concerned. I, I agree with this. Just because it's a quote, as the internet provider put it, um, it may be aimed at an avatar but not at the woman. And therefore, they wouldn't share who the anonymous person was. So because it's, aired, it's geared towards an avatar, it's aimed at an avatar, it's not aimed at an actual person, you don't give a shit. No, because there's still a person behind that avatar. I think it was mostly the, we just don't want to give up who it is because that's going to create problems down the road. No, it's not going to create problems down the road. But at this point, you 
I mean, th this could have led to something worse. Much, much worse. So, yeah, this is huge. Like I said, this is very impressive, and I, I applaud this. I really do. I, I applaud this. I think this is really great. It did a damn good job of this. I hope this opens up the gate for many more to come down the road. I really do. I really, really do. So Twitch has decided they're going to be getting rid of host mode. They're removing it. And everyone's upset about it. So streamers will no longer be able to host another channel while they're offline after October 3rd. So for some reason, uh, which droves of streamers, viewers, and the journalists writing the article could not figure out, Twitch is permanently removing its host mode feature on October 3rd. At that point, host mode, it's accompanying chat command, uh, forward slash host, and the channel setting feature auto host will be lost to time. Forever just a footnote in Twitch's history leaving streamers with only the raid option and its different functionality if they want to replace their stream with another when they go offline. Twitch announced the changes in, in a September 6th update to its How to Use Host Mode page, saying opaquely that it would remove the feature because the experience it delivers to viewers doesn't match their expectations when they come to Twitch. I don't know. People usually go to Twitch to... Um, I don't know, watch stuff? Streamers have used hosting to fill the screen with funny or interesting content or to spotlight friends during downtime, often leading viewers to something good after a stream ends. But according to Twitch, a feature that keeps fans entertained allows streamers to live their lives offline and brings attention to other creators actually limits hosted channels' growth potential because they are not able to build meaningful connections with <coughs> new viewers. I I'm sorry. That I kind of feel like is BS beyond BS beyond BS. Because if you're fucking... Ha if you have the viewers that are watching your goddamn channel and then you're promoting somebody else's channel after your channel ends, hey, I want to go check out that channel. Hey! <sighs> It's literally the chain of, hey, look, this is a really cool toy. I want to have that toy. Where'd you find that toy? Five aisles down. Mom, I'm going to go five aisles down and get this toy. It's really cool. Seriously. <laughs> oh, God. That's just, uh, yeah, no. This is at least uh, partially true, though. Unlike Twitch's raid feature, which lets streamers transfer all of their current viewers to another channel, host mode retains an offline streamer's chat, and viewers can directly engage with the hosted channel unless they go over to it themselves. But large streamers, small streamers, and their fans are frustrated with Twitch's interpretation of hosting. Many point to the fact that hosting helps them retain views retain viewers basically, promote their channel on a viewer's page and bring attention to underloved channels through no direct engagement. Hey, here's a newsflash for you. Did it ever occur to you that just maybe, just maybe the system does work and it's not working the way you want it to work, but it does work in general? No? Never, never occurred to you? I didn't fucking think so. Yeah, so Twitch is removing hosting other channels, and it's the dumbest thing I've ever read. So when I'm offline, I can't even have my viewers enjoy watching my friends who are live. Such an L. This came from at class on Twitter. So what is changing with host mode? I'm literally reading off of this tweet now. Uh, host mode is going away on October 3rd, 2022. After this date, the forward slash host command... And the host channel stream manager quick action will no longer be available. In addition, auto host will be changed to suggested channels in your channel settings. Yeah. Yeah. I love this though. This is this has got to be my favorite part here. Why are you uh, disrespecting or depreciating host mode? We introduced host mode in 2014 to make it easy for streamers to get their to give their viewers another stream to watch when they went offline. 
Since its launch, we've learned that streamers want to share their viewers with other streamers to help them grow and have introduced features that help them do that. We made the decision to depreciate this feature because the experience it delivers to viewers doesn't match their expectations. When they come to Twitch, viewers want to interact with a streamer when they live when they're live and host mode blocks this from happening. Preventing viewers from interacting with the streamer when they're watching also limits a channel's growth potential because they're not able to build meaningful connections with those new viewers. Did it ever occur to you that they could just click on the other person's thing, go to their channel, and watch it? Be like, hey, this, hey, this Twitch streamer, hey, this streamer might be offline, but this one's live. Go check them out here. And it plays it, and then when you click it, you can instantly go on to their thing, and then you can interact with them. A simple line of code to fix this very simple issue, and you would not be getting rid of this thing. Yeah, and then they even give you ideas on what I should do to help support the growth of other streamers once host mode is removed. Basically, just ditch Twitch, because I think it's going to be sucking then. So Twitch is now removing hosting, Canada streamer uh, Mr. T Lex Lexify wrote on Twitter. I said literally two years ago that Twitch was going to die, and you are actively witnessing it happening right now. Twitch seems to be making decisions that negatively affect small creators, and they just don't care. Another streamer also wrote on Twitter, On Reddit, the news was posted to the r forward slash live stream fail, where one user wrote that instead of improving the site, they're gutting it. Nah, oh, yeah, basically. Not gonna lie about that. Ah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. I love that. This is the this is another tweet here from at uh, Ty or T H A F nine. Uh, Twitch are removing the ability to host streamers on October third. To which another person, I'm a weirdo on Twitter, goes, "My brother in Christ, why would you get rid of such a good feature for small streamers? Because they don't want small streamers. They want the big ones. They basically realize that they're now the new YouTube, and they're gonna do what YouTube did for years." For years, all YouTube cared about was the high up streamers, the one on these, the ones on the upper echelon. Now it's well, we don't really want you here, so you're gonna have to disappear. But while discussing the upset forum, the upset. Former Twitch developer Chris Gamble wrote on Twitter that once raids were introduced, they became the way people ended their streams. And hosting was for endorsing channels for people who visited your channel while you're offline. Hosting was a great and important feature for its time, he said, but it hasn't been relevant for years now. Please think of it fondly and remember the good times, but don't, but do not worry about its retirement. I promise you, you'll barely notice it's gone. Will you? No, this, it's probably not going to be that simple to just forget about something that's integrally, that's intricately linked. The fact that you're like, oh, well, no, you have no choice no matter. We're getting rid of it. Deal with it. Meh, <laughs> screw you. The problem is you have nothing. Nada, zip, zilch, zenata. And the thing that really sucks the most is they don't even realize this. They don't even realize this. And it sucks. Oh well. Rest in peace, Twitch. You had such good potential. Shot straight to hell. All right, everybody, and that's going to do it then this week for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. It's been a fun, fun, fun time here, folks. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have, too. Don't forget to check out my Etsy shop, Simple Design by Andrew. <coughs> Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. But, yeah, check out my, uh, <laughs> check out my Etsy shop, Simple Design by Andrew. Make sure you check out my eBay page, A Roads 2012-2012 on eBay. We have Patreon. We have Kofi. We have, there's a GoFundMe that I still have up. There's a whole slew of things that are set up yet. So yeah, check out that stuff. 
And until next time, folks, I'm Andrew Rhodes. I'm bowing out. Until we meet again, I'll talk to you all next time. Bye, everybody!